morning. I'd like to welcome you to another edition of our Anchored in the Word Morning Reflection. We are in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 this morning. So if you have a Bible, I want to invite you to take it and let's look at verses 15 through 17 together. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 15 through 17. That which hath been is now, that which is to be hath already been, and God requireth that which is past. Moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment, that wickedness was there, and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. I said in mine heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. When we think about the passage in front of us, one of the things that we're reminded of is that life can be very frustrating because of this issue of injustice. And Solomon's going to talk about that, and he's going to talk about that from the perspective of a king. That's somebody who had the responsibility to make sure that when people violated the rights of others, they were held responsible for that. When people were being abused and mistreated, it was his responsibility as the final arbiter in the nation to make sure that justice was served and people were vindicated. And what's really interesting is as Solomon talks about this issue of injustice and how frustrating it is, he's going to remind us that this is a universal problem. And so with that in mind, let's look at a simple summary state of the passage in front of us and then dig into a couple of the details that we find in the passage. Summary statement is this. Our sense of right and wrong reminds us that we are made in the image of God. And our frustration with injustice is a reminder that mankind is universally corrupted by the fall. Last night in our church, we were able to talk about a little bit of background leading into the the book of Ecclesiastes. And we're going to be preaching through the book of Ecclesiastes for quite a while, kind of following uh, the line of some of the things we're talking about here in our morning reflections. But one of the things that we saw is that God created a good world. He put us in this world with purpose and value. And he expects us to actually serve him and love him and walk with him and commune uh, properly with the people around us, have a good relationship with people. But one of the things that we see is that this world, which is good, was corrupted by sin. And as a result of that corruption, we still have this sense of right and wrong. We have a moral conscience, but our moral conscience is constantly being bothered, not just by our own actions, but the actions of other people. And that's a very frustrating position to be in. And Solomon's going to express that in these verses. So let's look at a couple of the details of what he actually says about this frustration of injustice. The first fact we find in the passage is that injustice is a universal human experience. In verse 15, he says, that which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been. Now stop and think about how profound that statement is. He says, the things that we're dealing with right now They've already happened. And the things that are going to happen, they're happening right now. There's nothing new under the sun. He said it before. And so when he says it hath been, he's saying, look, your experience right now, to you it's fresh. To you it's the only time period in human history that's had the kind of struggles and difficulties that you're dealing with right now. But I want you to realize that you are not a unique culture. You're not a unique time period. Human nature has been this way for thousands upon thousands of years. Every culture, every time period has experienced the same kind of tumultuous difficulties that we experience today. And one of the things that's really sad about those who don't study history is that they don't have a proper view, a big picture view of the time period that they live in. They think that this is the worst time that's ever existed or this is the worst culture that's ever existed. And the reality is that we're just one amongst thousands and thousands of uh, people that have lived throughout different times in history. As cultures change, as uh, one generation comes and goes, the same kinds of things are dealt with. And so even when we take a few hundred years of American history, a very short period of time in human history, we will see that the kinds of things that we're dealing with now, we've dealt with them at other points in our history. When we look at our culture and compare it to other cultures living in the world today and throughout human history at different time periods, what do we find? The same kinds of problems. We are not a unique society that's somehow far worse than all the others. We are just one amongst many. And really Solomon's expressing that. He says, it's already been. We've experienced this in the past. And he says it's to be. No matter what decisions you and I make in this generation today, 
And by the way, we need to make good decisions. We need to do what is right. We should be just in our dealings with other people. But even if we make good choices today, right now, personally, and on a larger scale in our families and then in our nation, the reality is when our generation's gone, the next generation coming is going to do what? They're going to go right back to the kinds of things that we see in the past. Why is that? It's because of human nature. There is no culture, there is no time period that this plague of injustice has overlooked. We have all been treated unjustly, and every single period in human history has examples of this. The second fact we're going to look at is this. God will settle all wrongs. In verse 15, he says, God requires that which is past. Now, that's a really important statement. He's not just saying, hey, you know what? The way it is, it's always been, so what we're doing now doesn't matter. That's not what Solomon's saying. He's saying the way it is now is how it's always been. The way it is now is how it's going to be. But the way it is now needs to be lived out with this very important reminder that God is going to hold us responsible for actions. In other words, God's never turned a blind eye to injustice in the world. Whether it's our culture, whether it's, a, whether it's a group of people that's coming after us, or whether it's those people that came before us. God does not overlook injustice. He holds people responsibility, uh, responsible for the decisions that they make. We are responsible to God, and he expresses that. He says, God requireth that which is past. We are going to stand before God. The people before us are going to stand before God. It's not our place to go and settle every former injustice. In fact, it's an impossibility to do that. One of the reasons sometimes that people are frustrated in life is that rather than looking at how they need to live today, they are burdened by the decisions of people in the past that they have absolutely no power to reverse. And that's an extremely foolish way to live life. We cannot go back and settle every injustice. But God can, and not only can he, he will do that. It's foolish for us to live with a constant frustration of past injustices. You know, how many people are destroying their marriages today? They are being disgruntled employees today. They're being difficult people to relate to today because they're angry about something that they themselves did years and years and years ago that they can't change. Or somebody did to a person that really had nothing to do with them at all. The reality is we need to keep a big picture view of what we're doing in life. And we need to recognize that God's going to deal with situations even though we have no power to do it. So let's let him do his job. He's going to address these issues. And so that should comfort us. A third fact that we see in this passage, even those who are responsible to measure out justice often don't do it. And this is a thing that really frustrates us. We recognize that if somebody's a king or somebody's a judge, somebody's an authority, it's their job, it's their duty, it's their sacred responsibility to make sure that they do what is just and what is righteous. But one of the things that we learn in life is that even though people are given that great responsibility, many times they fall short of it. Sometimes they fall short of it on purpose. Sometimes they fall short on it. Even when they're trying to do what's right, they fall short of their responsibility. And Solomon addresses that in verse 16. He says, Moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment. Wickedness was there. And the place of righteousness, iniquity was there. Solomon said, I'm looking at people who are in authority, people who are supposed to be just and righteous, and I see corruption. I see injustice. I see that people aren't doing what is right. And he says, that's a frustration. Now remember, Solomon is a king. So he's in a position where his job is to be responsible to do what's right. And when Solomon makes that statement, he may even be indicting himself on some of the ways that in the past he's handled situations. Is there any person listening to this study this morning who doesn't have at least one moment in your past that you look back and you say, man, I didn't handle that the right way. <laughs> what I said there was wrong and I, I regret it. The way that I handled that situation, the way that I handled that interpersonal conflict, I regret it. It was wrong. Is there anybody listening to this who can't sit there and say, hey, you know, I didn't call that right? Well, Solomon was a king and he most certainly didn't always call it right. And so when he says, I've seen in the place of judgment, wickedness, and iniquity, 
It may even be that he remembers times where he did not handle himself properly. But most certainly as the king, there were times that there were people that had disputes that were not handled properly by those under his jurisdiction. And when those cases got to him, he saw that justice was not served on the lower level, that it was unjust, that it was evil, that it was wicked. And he had to reverse that as the king and he had to make it right. Solomon says this is something that we see all the time in life, that people who are supposed to do what is just don't always do it. We see that hypocrisy, abuse of authority, corruption, partiality are things that frustrate us. In fact, in some circumstances, they make us angry because we say it was supposed to be handled on this level and it wasn't. Why not? This is a human experience that's universal. And that's what Solomon's trying to say. When these things happen, we shouldn't be shocked. We should recognize that we live in a fallen world and we need to relate to those situations properly. The, fi the fi final fact that I want to mention this morning is that God will vindicate and he will punish in his time. When it talks about God being just towards the righteous and towards the wicked, realize that when he's being just toward the righteous, he's vindicating them. And when he's being just toward the wicked, he's punishing them. And he expresses that in verse 17. He says, I said in mine heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked. There is a time there for every purpose and for every work. The thing that Solomon found comfort in, the thing that kind of kept in check his frustration was the fact that even though he saw injustice in this world and it was evil and it was frustrating and it disappointed him, he said, I know there's a God in heaven who's going to settle these matters in his time. And so this is not simply something we're hoping for. It's a guarantee. One of the reasons that people can violate conscience and abuse authority is because they don't have that restraining element of a fear of God. And one of the things that Solomon reminds us of is that we should have a fear of God. One of the reasons that people get discouraged when they see injustice and they feel that life is hopeless is because they forget or they don't actually believe that God's going to come and resolve the matters that are going on in front of them. And so we need to allow our attitudes to be brought in check by this passage of scripture. Injustice is real. Injustice happens. It frustrates us. It discourages us. But we need to recognize there's a God in heaven who's going to settle these matters. So here's the question. How do we practically apply what we're talking about this morning? Let me give you a couple of details that I jotted down today that I hope will help you. The first is this. You can be grieved by injustice but don't be shocked. What I mean is when we see that people don't do right, it should grieve us. Sin is evil. Sin is painful. Sin is harmful. Injustice is a terrible thing to behold. And it should grieve us when we see it. But it shouldn't shock us because we live in a fallen world and we recognize that even people in power are at the best sinners. And so they're going to make mistakes. Sometimes they're actually going to violate their own consciences by the way that they do things. There are going to be times that they're not violating their conscience. Their conscience has actually become hardened because of the way that they have repeatedly violated their consciences. It should grieve us, but it shouldn't shock us when we see these things. A second thing is this. Don't despair in the face of injustice. Frustration should not lead to despair. There is hope. There's a God in heaven who ultimately is going to settle all wrongs, and that should comfort us. A third thing I want to mention, don't carry injustices that you're, power, that you're powerless to address. When we talk about carrying injustices, the reality is that there are things that are going to happen to us in life that we cannot resolve. We can't fix them. We, we can't go back and change the past. And one of the things that can hold us back from God's blessings in the future is being burdened by the past. I want to encourage you that even when you've been wrong, put those things before God and let God judge those matters. Let God be the one who handles that thing on your behalf. And don't carry the weight and the burden of something that you are powerless to resolve yourself. I also want to add this. Don't be selective in how you look at this issue of injustice. Realize that when we get frustrated with others, there are times that we are guilty of the very things that we are frustrated with others for. 
You know, I think about a person who gets so fixated on another's way that they've wronged them. And this is a really common thing that we see in our interpersonal relationships. We become so fixated on someone else's sin, their violation of our rights, that we end up doing the exact same thing that they did to us to others. Why is that? It's because we're flawed individuals. And so we need to recognize that when we roll to God those burdens, we need to also be a little bit self-reflective and ask the question, is it possible that I have been selective in how I look at this issue of injustice? That I have treated others wrong and I'm only focused on when I've been treated wrong. We must be very cautious of this. Another thing I wanna mention, be thankful that in the end, God is the one who's going to handle these matters. We need to be patient. We need to trust God that in his appropriate time, he's going to handle the matters that so frustrate us today. And the last thing I'm gonna mention is this, be thankful for the gospel. You know, as we cry out for justice, we need to recognize a cry for justice also is something that needs to come back on us. If we want God to be just in other people's lives, then we should expect him to be just toward us. And the reality is that we are all sinners, we are all unrighteous, we are all flawed individuals. And if it wasn't for the gospel of Jesus Christ, where the Lord Jesus hung on that cross and paid the penalty for our sins and bore our sins on himself, the just for the unjust to bring us to God, if it wasn't for the gospel and God's grace that's demonstrated to us through that work of redemption, if it wasn't for that, we would all be judged eternally and bear the full weight of God's wrath. When we talk about injustice, we need to recognize that we are all unrighteous. We are all unclean. We are all people who deserve God's full wrath. Yet God has poured out his wrath on Christ and we can stand redeemed and justified because of his work of redemption. And that should also bring us comfort. In the midst of the frustrations of life, remember there's a God who redeems people. And we should be thankful for his forgiveness, his cleansing, and his redemption. I hope this has been a challenge to you this morning. It certainly was to me as I thought about it. I think it's really practical considering the days that we live in. Let's bow together for a word of prayer. If this has been an encouragement to you, I hope you share that. And uh, we'll look forward to talking the next time we're together tomorrow. Father, thank you for the opportunity to study your word together. Bless this study. Use it in people's hearts. Encourage them. And to help our perspective to be balanced when we look at this issue of justice. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Well, it's been good to talk to you this morning, and I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Enjoy your holiday if you have the day off. Bye now.